done to the uh, Blarney Grass and Reed Band because certainly since about half six they've been practicing here all on their own, marching around. And over the last couple of days, Davy Fitz has been managing and cajoling these players that this this moment, the next 70 minutes, belongs to them. He has analysed the game, and I'm sure Dennis Walsh has done the same. He's come up with a game plan. You can see the Cork defence without Sean Ogilhalpin, such an influential figure. And Waterford, by the way, won the toss. They're going to be playing from right to left as we look at it here. Man in the middle is from Clara in County Offaly, Brian Gavin. It's his very first Munster final, and we're up and running. First touch, own cap. Down towards Seamus Prendergast. Tussle for possession. Coming forward is John Gardner. Loses possession. Coming through the middle is Richie Foley. Flicks it outside to Owen Kelly. Had a great game the last day. He's continuing on. First score of the replay. It's this man, former <coughs> Mount Zion star, now playing with Passage. Yeah, Marty, um, Richie Foley, lovely pass outside. I, I made that comment coming up to the match last week that you know, that's the type of score Waterford need to be getting, throwing the ball around, having a little look up, and that was great play. We see Michael Cousin gone in centre forward as we expected, and um, Seamus Pendergast uh, playing in the corner as I, I thought he would. He's inside on Brian Murphy. I think we'll see him coming out for the odd puck out or whatever, but he's gone into the corner straight away. Shane O'Neill has gone out to the sideline almost to get a quick puck out from Donal Oak. But I think the uh, Cloyne and Cork <laughs> keeper is going for distance. Tony Brown gets a touch and it. Linesman indicates it's the cork ball. And the linesman is James Owens from County Leash over the far side. And you can see already Marty looking down. John Milan is the only Waterford forward inside nearly 50, 60 yards of the goal. Uh, Pen Seamus Pendergast is way out the middle of the field. Uh, Stephen Malumphy is back in the half-back line. And uh, Milan completely isolated. Ball dropped in. Good hands. Clear down the field. Dropping it into the middle, as a touch, just about. And away come Waterford again, coming through the middle. Bursting forward is Kevin Moore, lays it off. First shame is Prendergast, being tackled by two Cork defenders. One of them is Brian Murphy, the other is Tom Kenny, who's back there, helping out his defence. Murphy comes in again to try and scoop it out. It's going to be a throw ball, I would uh, feel. And that's exactly what it is. Pulled by Prendergast. Coming forward is Shane O'Sullivan. He's definitely fouled. Free for Waterford. Yeah, and this player really has improved, uh, you know, out of all recognition. He's been on around the panel for a few years, but he had a brilliant game the last day. Very, very strong physically, and that's something about that, for that Waterford forward line as well. He's in the middle of the field, but it's Seamus Prendergast, Owen Kelly, you know, big men um, all over the half hour, and Stephen Malumphy, very strong, and won a great free there. Well, we've spoken about it earlier. What a magnificent goal Owen Kelly scored the last day. His free taking is pretty impressive as well. Two points on the scoreboard for Waterford, both of them credited to this man. Great catch. Michael Brickwatch. Lays it off to his captain, Stephen Malumphy. As always, the hard-working John Milan. Seamus Prendergast is there as well. Last one to uh, touch the slither over the sideline was a cork man. Yeah, Marty, what a start by Michael Walsh. You know, the tactic, Michael Cousin, six foot seven, and the first two high balls have come down, Michael Walsh taking them out of the air. He's been outstanding since that move back to centre-back. You know, it's about 18 months ago. I think it was a league match against Kilkenny, his first match at centre-back, and he's been brilliant there. Richie Foley. It's a good cut, but it's just a little bit too strong. Shane Murphy, named at left half back, but starting as we anticipated at right cornerback. Shane O'Neill from Bishopstown is at left half. Frankie Murphy is in there, so to his own Murphy. Sideline ball, it seemed to favour Cook. These certainly ones we've seen Ben Tynton in, in the past. He hit a few wide last week, unlike him. First sideline cuts, dropping it in. 
Dangerous ball. Exactly is around there. So two is Tony Brown. Out for his own Murphy. A little bit of pressure from Fraggy. Sideline ball this time to Waterford. Dickie Murphy, the linesman, the man who's been in charge of four All Ireland finals in his career. I'm really surprised, Mary. The cork backs are following the men off out the field. There's only two Waterford forwards inside their own half of the field. Owen Murphy down the middle towards Kevin Moore. Good hands. It's one against one up here for the moment. John Milan and Brian Murphy. Milan keeps it in. Shane Murphy. Hefty challenge on Milan. And to Milan's credit, he didn't even uh, protest. Great catch again. This time by left half forward Michael Cusson. Big six foot seven lad. He's giving a throw ball. Tom Kenny coming through the middle. Good stick work. Needs a little bit of support. Frankie Murphy calling for it. Over the far side. It's his midfield partner, Carl Nocton. Scored the first point the last day for Cork. He's doing it again. Six days later. <coughs> yeah, good play by Tom Kenny there. Won a, won a very hard ball. And, you know, the competition, every ball that breaks. There's four and five lads. Brian Gavin trying to let the game flow early on here. And a few hefty challenges going in. But, um, you know, I think he's right to try to, to get a bit of a flow into it. Tuck out by Clinton Hennessy. Nice little pick up there by uh, Prendergast, Seamus. Out towards Richie Foley. This comes in and there's a little bit of a push. The referee have blown his whistle. Shane Walsh was gone inside. But the referee clearly blew his whistle. Free taken by Donald Cusick. Aimed at a Saki O'Happy. Ball given away to Carl Nocton. Turns to his right, drops it over this side, but there's nobody home, I'm afraid. Not in a court jersey, that is. Good pressure by Ben O'Connor. Poor defending, it must be said. Michael Cusson is there as well. And eventually it is Brick Walsh. Lays it back for his Declan Prendergast. Tremendous pressure by Cork. Michael Cusson across the face of the goal and wide. Just that particular occasion, Brick was just a little bit lax, wasn't he? He was, he nearly had too much time on the ball, but the tackling of the court forwards, uh, very impressive since the start of the game. We saw it from Waterford last weekend. Uh, Kieran Murphy in particular in the corner is after making three, two or three very, very good tackles. Tuck up, drops down on Seamus Prendergast. Brian Murphy is there. Just barely kept in play, batted down for Cahill Nocton to uh, give it plenty of distance. But it's heading towards the square and Thurlis, I'm afraid. Very, very frustrating for an inside forward. There, there was only maybe a one in ten chance of, not, of putting that over the bar. That should have been played in into straight on top of Asaki. Dennis Walsh, I'm sure won't be pleased with that particular effort. Good hands again by John Gardner. Down towards Frankie Murphy. Owen Murphy going back to gather. Isaki comes into challenge. Gives it back to his fullback, Liam Lawler. Four mile water. Little touch. Just a little bit by Stephen Malumphy. Sent in. Dangerously. Towards John Milan. Owen Cadigan. Was he holding his hurling? Two of them are at it. Battling. Fair and square. It's the Cork fullback that's coming out with it. Laying it off first, Carl Nocton. Good play by Cork. Sent down the middle. Nobody home again. Brick watch over this side. Good work by Shane Murphy. Shane Walsh, however, spotted the little illusion. Grabbed the possession. Is bearing down on Donald Cusick. It's a frontal charge. The referee is indicating. And it's a free in for Waterford. I see Owen Kelly pointing at the square. He's maybe thinking he was fouled inside the square. Shane Walsh head. Yeah, well, I don't think um, Brian Murphy wasn't going to get out, or Owen Kelly wasn't going to get out of the way. You know, he couldn't. He had much choice. But I think that, that free foul was maybe inside the. 
certainly was inside the larger tangle. Inside the larger tangle, yeah. Owen Kelly taking the 20 meter free. And I'm pretty sure he's going to tap this over the bar. Three points for Waterford. Three points for Owen Kelly. Yeah, Shane Walsh uh, did very well there. A lot of people in Waterford think maybe he's an out-and-out -out full forward. You know, he's a goal getter, but uh, did very well there. Very clever on the ball and and won a good free. Just getting a little bit of attention to Shane Murphy from the uh, Aaron Zone Club. Many people feel he should actually be in the starting 15. This is uh, within Cork, ex-Cork minor and All-Ireland medalist. Won two counties with his club. So he's coming to the starting 15 with quite a, an impressive CV. Attention for Shane Walsh is uh, delaying the puck out from Donal Cusick. But Walsh is OK. Former dual star, in fact, with Waterford. Scored the winning goal against Kerry in the Munster Under-21 football final all of seven years ago. I'm sure you remember that particular game. Got huge headlines. That will be the headlines tomorrow, I wonder. Declan Prendergast. Nice combination play in towards Stephen Malumphy. Picked out, however, by uh, Ronan Kerr. Clever ball. Far as Ben O'Connor. Goes for distance. All the way down towards Isaki. Oh, happy. Quinton Hennessy, Liam Lawler wanted it as a hand pass. Goes down for Shane O'Sullivan instead. Tom Kenny unable to hook or indeed to block. Rebound falls into the path of one Shane Murphy. Foul the possession it would seem and uh, Waterford are incensed. And perhaps in fact he stood over the sideline but either way it looked like a foul as uh, Paul Nocton drops it in again. Quinton Hennessy comes off his line. Frankie Murphy unable to block that particular clearance and it goes out over the sideline. Sideline ball for Cork. Yeah, certainly Davy is getting very animated. I said it was steps he was really talking about there. Yeah, you it was know, steps. Took yeah. seven red steps there and um, right beside the water for Dougal. <laughs> Davy is getting for Dougal absolutely hopped out of their seats. Davy is getting a little bit excited under. Used to that, I think, at this stage. Batted down towards Pat Horgan. Noel Connors with him. Who touched it last? James Owens from Wexford, by the way, not from Leash. He uh, indicates it's a Waterford ball. Noel Connors, Waterford minor a few years ago, won a couple of parties in All Ireland colleges with De La Salle in 2007 and 2008. Former college star, and he's making it at the highest level as well. Another sideline ball. A little bit of pushing and shoving going on. Patrick Horgan going over the sideline. Yeah, certainly no soft freeze been given tonight. He just knocked, he just knocked out over the line there. Was just, was trying to keep the ball in. Rest, wrestled nearly over the line. Richie Foley wasn't letting him go anyway, that's for sure. Here's Tony Brown. Easy ball for Tom Kenny. Dropping it in towards Fraggy. Runs on to Isaki. Once he has the ball in hand, it's trouble for Waterford. And that is wide. Good chance for Cork here. Isaki did really well, except for the finish. Yeah, he did, but I think Liam Lawler, in fairness, too, he kept him out. You know, he pushed him away from the goals and did his job. And it was a difficult angle at that stage. Would have been a great goal to be able to put it over into the far top corner. Stephen Malumphy obviously has helmet problems from Belly Duff Upper. Brian Gavin kindly trying to fix it for him. All star, of course, uh, three years ago at left half forward. He scored three points against Clare but didn't register at all the last day, six days ago. Just in case there is a big problem, Brian O'Halloran from Clashmore is warming up. Yeah, and this young man, Brian O'Halloran. He did his leaving cert uh, a few weeks ago. He's only back training with the panel. I think he was, um, he was a minor last year, but he's supposedly going unbelievably well. I think a lot of soccer teams in England looking at him as well. He's supposed to be a very, very talented young lad. I'm looking forward to seeing him. They're certainly hoping to hold on to him, and uh, his reputation in the Waterford has certainly uh, been gathering headlines over the last uh, year or so. 
never know, we might see him here in the Munster final replay. Sideline ball again for Cork. No Cork forward yet to score as we approach the 15th minute. And in fact, Cork haven't scored since the fifth minute. Easily gathered by Tony Brown. Flips it down towards his full forward line. Gathered here by Brian Murphy. Carl knocked. It. Goes for height again. Down the middle. Isaki is coming out. Hops by him. And indeed Liam Lawler. Rick Walsh is back there. Lays it out for as Declan Prendergast takes the hit from Ahalpin. Gives it up for Shane O'Sullivan. Good play, Waterford. Confident play, in fact. Kevin Moran just got a touch to it. Back in with Ronan Curran. Almost picked up by Shane Murphy. More importantly, it's this man that has it. John Milan. First touch, first point. Yeah, well, that's a great score, Martin. Brick Walsh won a great ball uh, out to Declan Pendergast, who's having an outstanding uh, season since coming on at half time against Clare after stopping the short puck out there. But, uh, but a brilliantly worked score and a great finish by Milan. And that started all the way down the Waterford half of the field. Started by Brick, as you mentioned. Great movement. Great well pick. picked up here yeah, by yeah. John Milan. Four scoring chances for Waterford, four points. Not a bad statistic. Here's Shane Walsh. Well blocked, blocked by uh, Tom Kenny. Carl Nocton, low into the corner. Good ball to Esaki Halpin. Lou Lawler with him. Lawler has to try and get there. Esaki is there, all six foot seven. Trying to get by himself and Owen Murphy. Still Osaki. Lawler is down on the deck. Referee blows the whistle. Osaki Ohalpin was travelling, taking too many steps. And I know you can't see it, but Davy Fitz, I know he's five foot three, but he went up six foot seven himself. He was delighted with the defending of Lawler. Yeah, he did. Won a good ball there. Yeah, I don't think. Maybe five or six steps, you can't argue with it. Liam Lawler is on the deck. And, uh, the umpires haven't raised their hands, but the referee Brian Gavin. Well, I, think Bra I think Brian Gavin saw it, he just wanted to get up and get on with it. A bit of messing around. Loose ball for centre half back Ronan Carr. Down towards Fraggy Murphy. Got a little touch to it. Fraggy again. Good defending by Brick Watch. Loses possession when trying to get it up under the hurl. Coming through the middle, Niall McCarthy. Referee again has blown his whistle. Dead straight in front of the post, and this should be a score for Cork. Twelve minutes, remember now, since Cork last scored, and they are playing. Well, it's hardly even worth mentioning. It's only a crossfield breeze, very, very light. Yeah, like last week, low scoring, but you know, plenty of battles going on there. Personal battles uh, that have to be won early in the game, and. Um, you know, no, no, no easy freeze been given out there. So you have to really work hard for for your score. Great tackling on both sides. So you know, uh, not maybe flashy hurling, but but exciting, interesting at the same time. Wonder what happened between Liam Lawler and Isaki. Watch the number three. Oh, oh. Yeah, definitely well, used. Yeah, went with the head. He's going to be in trouble for that one. That is not nice. And I'm sure the CCCC will be looking at that later on as Cork have a chance. It's scrambled away off the line. Wonderful defending, and guess who? Noel Connors. This should have been a goal. It was heading towards the goal line. Just a little touch, and just there, Connors got there. Wonderful defending as Pat Horgan chased after it. Well done, number yeah. four. Great cornerback play. Look, we see it again. Pat Horgan did everything right. Lovely little flick. Was probably certain it was going to be a goal, and Noel Connors dashed in. Great defending on, and cleared a certain goal. Sixty-five. Light mist beginning to fall here now in Simple Stadium. As John Gardner takes the sixty-five, looks good from here. Umpire confirms that that is the case. Yeah, Marty, you have to say, he's absolutely having an outstanding year, John Gardner, scoring from freeze from play, but he's defending brilliantly as well. Uh, had a great game here the last day and you know, playing some of the best hurling of his life this year. 
only has one all-star five years ago and yet he's 27 and feel John has been around for so long well Tommy Walsh I suppose is there as well you know he gets most of them he's won Absolutely. and won every year since he started playing in County Hurling so not an easy jersey to get you can't argue about Tommy Walsh that's for sure brilliant hurler Tom Kenny steps away from the challenge John Milan and Seamus Prendergast Ben O'Connor good calling Michael Cusson barely kept in by Ezekiel Halpine Liam Lawler is there flicks it forward good play again by Waterford but the just ball didn't hop right for Tony Brown bit of a scramble Richie Foley got a touch to it Carl knocked it more importantly has it in his hand looking around has to go all the way back where is Shane O'Neill remember He's playing at left half back despite wearing number two. And that ball is also wide. Yeah, Marty, bad wide. But before that, Mike Cousin just, you know, just, there's one thing about a high ball, but it was a completely, you know, there was no uh, shape to it at all, just a, a Hail Mary ball into the square. And Asaki is big, but he's, you know, he can't be winning those impossible balls. Clinton Hennessy doing a Donald Logue, taking the quick puck out. Sent in by Shane O'Sullivan. Here's Donald Logue. No time to put it into the hand. Drives it down the wing. Good calling between Ben O'Connor. And left half forward, Michael Cusser. And that's wide again. But really, the ball should be going into Isaki because. He should be playing it in front of him. You know, it doesn't have to be coming down out of the clouds, but we saw Cotton knocked him with a wide from way out of field. Michael Cusser, a couple of balls in like that. And, you know, I think Tomas mentioned before, it's a big game for him, maybe trying that little bit too hard to get on the score sheet or whatever, but uh, you have to be playing those balls from that distance out in in front of the full forward. Then. Puck out again from Clinton Hennessy. Ends up with Michael Cusson. Cahal Nocton leaves it. Sent in by Niall uh, McCarthy, well gathered by Owen Murphy. And remember, there is a little bit of a mist here now in Central Stadium uh, falling, so it's going to make uh, handling just that little bit more difficult. John Millard over the sideline. Sideline ball for Cahal. And Marty, just make another point. Every ball doesn't have to go through Osaki or Halpin as well. You know, Pat Horgan is there having a great year, you know, great league campaign. Kieran Murphy, very uh, accomplished hurler, and they're getting no ball at all. It's, it's nearly as if everything has to come out of the clouds and down on top of Osaki, whereas you need to be bringing those lads into the game as well. Scored three points in the drawn match, John Gardner. Custom did well to keep it in. Rick Walsh cleaning up an awful lot of ball in that half back line. Batted down. Richie Foley and Stephen Malumphy there. It's Malumphy that has the possession. Tries to hand pass it. Great defending by Cork. Three of them at the time. Taha Nocton leaves it for Tom Kenny, who's now surrounded by three Waterford players. Pulled on by Seamus Prendergast. Referee is going to give a throw ball again. This is almost a replica of last Sunday, isn't it? Very, very similar. Yeah, you know. A lot of hard tackling, a lot of lads, a lot of crowd. You know, I'd, I'd love to see Waterford if they spread out and played more traditional in their positions. Fraggy aiming for Isaki. Knocked away. Ben O'Connor chasing after this. Nice stick work by O'Connor. Can't control it. Slide down ball. You know, it's Waterford style, they bring so many players out to field and obviously when the ball comes in there's going to be a lot of defenders around it so I'd love if they just line up in their six forward positions and play their own area but that's not the way they do it. Owen Murphy has come across to take this, the Shamrocks club, intermediate actually between Tallow and Yall. Knockanore Parish in West Waterford. Stalwart of uh, this particular team for the last number of years. Not his best sideline cup by the way, still his brick watch. Has that nice habit with the hurley of laying it off. Long ball. Shane Walsh and Milan between them. Combined. The finish by Milan is superb. Second point for the De La Salma. And it's five points to three. Yeah, great play by Shane Walsh again here. You know, lovely, just a simple little flick out and a simple score uh, by John Milan. Puck out down to Cusson. Declan Prendergast and Walsh waiting for it. It's, this is Brick Walsh, thanks to the stick of Declan Prendergast. Ball into space, but it carried a little bit too much weight. Easy ball for Don Lowe. Cusson, Gardner, 
available. Good understanding between left half and right half back. Dante Saki, good control. Going to take a run at Liam Lawler. There are footballers in the piercing, by the way. But uh, that's not his best pass. Easy ball for Shane O'Sullivan. Drives it long. Over towards Kevin Moore. Trying to get inside the cover. Shane Murphy, sideline ball. Which way is it going? It's going to Waterford. Coming across to take it is Shane O'Sullivan. Former Fitzgibbon Cup winner, two years ago now with WIT. Bally Gunnerman scored twice against Cork last Sunday. Sending it along the surface, it skids along all the way far as John Gardner. Under a little bit of pressure from Shane Walsh. Undoubtedly he was fouled. And that is a free out for the Lee Siders. A little bit of holding there. Yeah, just a hurdle was held there, yeah. It just shows the intensity though, the tackling is savage out there on both sides and you know, low scoring but as I said earlier, you know, still an interesting game. Ronan Kern, better ball for Isaki Halpin. As well to gather, lays it off to Cusson. Interception just about was by uh, Brick Walsh. Hits it high, Owen Kelly, John Garner. It would uh, certainly appear that Owen Kelly was Fouling John Gardner. Yeah, he jumped straight into him. He wasn't facing the ball at all. Watch John Gardner raising the ball and Kelly, oh, and Kelly just jumped straight into him. John Gardner, eight years playing with his county. Made his debut against Limerick back in 2002. Dropping this in. Plenty of big men around there. Don't get the possession. Cleared away by Richie Foley. Kevin Moore unable to uh, keep it in. Sideline ball for Cork. Yeah, very anxious. You know, that again, there, you know, plenty of time in the ball. He could have taken that in his hand and delivered it down the field. We've seen a lot of very loose shooting from both, both players out around the middle of the field, hitting balls wide and aimless balls into the forward line. Tom Kenny going to take this sideline cut. Not his best either. Good block down by Cusson. Waterford regained possession. Shane O'Sullivan. Judged by the referee to have been over carrying. So it's a chance here for Cork. Will Ben O'Connor take it or will he leave it for John Gardner? Yeah, thought it looked harsh enough. Initially just flicked it on there. We, can't, we don't really see there the steps that he took initially, but he tried to flick it on over, over the head. So we had one earlier um, on the other side, so these things tend to balance out. Pat Cronin there with uh, Dennis Walsh thinking about making a move, switch. John Gardner going for his second point here. And that ball is wide. Six wides for Cork. By the way, Waterford have yet to register a single one. Yeah, it's unbelievably low score. <laughs> All the plays, you know, it's out over the line and wide, and you know, no Cork forward has scored from play, which is unbelievable. You know, at, at this level of hurling, uh, it's just not good enough, really. Well, at any level of hurling, it's not good enough. That's what the forwards are there for. Ronan Curran into the space. Pat Horgan, sideline ball again. Just out of interest, let me tell you that Ben O'Connor is the only Cork player to score so far in, in terms of the forwards. John Gardner from a 65, Cahal Nocton from midfield, and Ben O'Connor from a free. Niall McCarthy, Michael Cusson, Fraggy, Esaki, Pat Horgan, yet to score. And Waterford, it's Owen Kelly with three, John Milan with two. That's a far better sideline cut. But it's not so good the finish, I'm afraid. It looked good, it was going up into the air. Marty, I Joel, keep, isn't it, it is though, but I keep harping on about it. Look, if you watch Kilkenny Hurden, they line out in their positions and they play them and they play their zone. If you look out in the field here now, every player is on the far side of the field. There's no there's there's nobody in the right corner back, right half back position for Cork. There's nobody in the left corner back, left half position for Waterford. And you know, it's like something you'd see in, the, in a kids' match really. They're all following the ball and there's nobody holding their position. That gives you an idea. One half of the field 
is just all uh, full of players, they're right. half empty. Well, one of the things, I only played one championship match in Turles, but you dream about playing in Turles, it's so big, big open pitch, and players just aren't using it, they're just all crowding it, and you know, it's very, very tactical, and I wouldn't be a fan of that type of hurling, I think you should be playing in your position and go and win your position. Like an under-14 game, you'll be telling the lads, you know, spread it out, open it up, lads, don't, uh, don't just follow the ball, but that's what, at the moment, is happening. Tony Brown is in there. Set two is Brick Walsh. Shane O'Sullivan. All alone, Ronan Kirk. Back down towards Frankie Murphy. Pat Horgan. Michael Cusson is coming in first. Here's Frankie, the captain. Floating one across in the centre is Niall McCarthy. Can he get a touch cut defending my own Murphy? And it's gone out over the line. Good defending by this man, it must be said. Yeah, it was a brilliant ball by Karen Murphy over to Niall McCarthy. You know, and really should have done better. Great hook by Owen Murphy. Also having a very good year, you know, maybe a very underrated corner back as well. Um, super hook there, but great ball by Frankie Murphy. That's what he has, great vision. You know, he's there to look up there, you see the ball coming over the head. You can't like, really have had the best of the goal yeah. score attempts. Well, they've had, they've had nearly all the play. Goals. They've yeah. had nearly all the play as well. Like, Waterford are living off crumbs. Here's Kevin Moore. Going through the centre. Scored last Sunday. Oh, that's a brilliant bit of defending. Comes out for his own Kelly. Can he supply the finish? The umpire goes for the flag. Four points for own Kelly in this match. That's his third. Yeah, and a super super point. I was just if he hit it wide, the Shemus Prendergast was completely free over here. You'll see him there in front of the goals. The ball really should have been flicked over them. But here's Shane O'Neill coming back kept his eye on the ball all the way and super defending six chances for Waterford six points and that illustrates what you were saying Marty it perfectly Waterford are getting very very little ball up the field but uh, they're very economical with it whereas Cork are wasting a huge amount of position there's Brick again with another brilliant catch looking around for a space to hit it into John Milan not a great ball inside I'm afraid for Milan Easily cut out by Shane O'Neill. Looking sharp. Down towards Michael Cusson. Chasing after him is Noel Connors. This is going to be interesting still. Cusson! Liam Lawler is there. A and great save by Clinton Hennessy. Marty there, I think we'll get a chance to see it again. A brilliant save by Hennessy. And here comes Connors. Driving it along. Coming out to meet it is Shane Murphy. Gets there first. Crowd at the far side felt he had crossed the line. The linesman, James Owens, did Ronan Curran dropping it in. There's a whistle and it belongs to the referee being blown. And there's a free in for Cork. Three goal scoring opportunities for Cork in this first half. But here's a brilliant save from Clinton Innes. And he took plenty of steps to Michael Cousin. It actually hit him, but <laughs> maybe he didn't save it. He just hit him on the shoulder there and back out. But he stood up well to it and uh, didn't go into the net. Gives you an idea of the angle that Ben O'Connor is facing. Squeezes it inside the right-hand post for his second point. Six points to four in Simple Stadium. See Liam Lawler down now. I saw I saw Davy indicating over to him, pointing at his own hamstring. Uh, whether it's just to slow down the player or, or he, he genuinely hurt himself, I'm not sure. Liam Lawler is obviously uh, requiring the medical attention. Physio Peter Kerwin. Sean O'Gohalpine there, centre of your picture, very disappointed. I was speaking to him before the game, in fact, and there was no way, although he was named in the starting 15, was he going to make it with a hamstring. He needs another week. This man, happily enough, is able to resume his position at fullback. Clinton Hennessy driving the ball into the cork half of the field. Well gathered by Seamus Prendergast. John Gardner coming in to challenge. Loose ball comes out for Shane O'Sullivan. Tackled by Ben O'Connor. 
In the eyes of the referee, it was a foul. Here's O'Sullivan, here's O'Connor with the push. Free dead straight in front of the post for the Dacius. It could be Shane O'Neill that's down, is it for? It is Shane O'Neill, it's uh, Declan O'Sullivan there, the physio, uh, giving a rub to the right corner back. Looks like that hamstring again, doesn't it? Yeah, well, he went down very uh, quickly there. You see me? No, it is yeah. the hamstring, yeah. He, he pulled up. That doesn't look good for him, and he's been really playing superbly since he's been moved out to yeah. fill out for Sean O'Gahalpin. He's had at least one beautiful rob. Good block down, and he's hurling well. Well, he's huge pace, and he can cover for other players as well. And if he has to go, be a huge loss with Sean O'Gahalpin already out. This yeah. is uh, Ray Ryan that's coming on from Sarsfields. Yeah, he came on last week. He's a good player, but he wouldn't have the sort of maybe range of skill that that uh, yeah he's gone. The indication is that he's got, he's gone. He's after pulling the hamstring. So that's two of the first choice from the Cork defence that's now gone. Sean O'Gahalpin since last Sunday, and Shane O'Neill now. So big blows to the Leesiders. Ray Ryan gets his chance. He's going to be introduced in just a moment. And certainly, I think Dennis Walsh will be happy to uh, draw breath at halftime. His team have been dominating, particularly around the half-back line and midfield areas, but they haven't really been scoring. No, and it's down to a lot of the ball that are playing in. You know, like, it's not traditional Cork fast, fast, fast ball in, in front of a full forward line. It's just sort of lobbing it in, hoping for the best. And just because you have a big, a big man in there, doesn't mean he's going to win sort of aimless high balls. Owen Kelly standing over this. Two additional minutes, as you can see on your screen, as we take the point from Owen Kelly. Five points for Owen Kelly in this first half. Into injury time now in this first half in Simple Stadium. It's almost a replica of the first half that we saw last Sunday, which was a bit disappointing. Scooped away this time by Owen Cadigan. Sideline ball for Waterford. David Fitz is trying to reorganise his defence while this sideline ball is being taken. Telling players to, as you can see, go forward. Try and get another score before the break. Shane O'Sullivan as well, capable of dropping this in to Shane Walsh. Cuts it cross field instead. Over towards Seamus Prendergast. First touch for Ray Ryan. Line ball for Waterford. Thought about the quick ball. Going to leave it. Going across is Richie Foley. Scored a point against uh, Tipperary in the Munster final last year, Richie Foley. And of course, injured his finger and his left hand last Sunday week. And played with those uh, couple of stitches in his second finger and left hand, and really he was disappointed being taken off. But look at this. Ah, uh, more than made up for it. First point for Richie Foley from Abbey side in County Waterford. And this is a thing of beauty when it's done properly. Yeah, and a fine game he's having too, Richie Foley. Much better today, the stitches out and, uh, you know, hurling a lot more freely than last weekend. Well, it certainly has brightened up the first half, Richie Foley, with that wonderful sideline cut. Certainly Waterford uh, will be happy to go in leading at the break at half-time, considering the Cork dominated. Three goal-scoring chances we counted for Cork, with Clinton Hennessy making one particular good save. At half-time in Simple Stadium in the Munster final replay of 2010, it's Waterford eight points, Cork four. Back to you, Mike. Time to rejoin our commentary team here in Simple Stadium. Marty Morrissey, Michael Dignan. Thank you very much, Michael. I hope Ger Nan is right. As uh, Waterford and Cork, well, the first half was pretty poor, to be honest with you. Let's hope it is a repeat of last Sunday. Here's Milan, off the post. Chance here. Good defending by Brian Murphy. Good work indeed by Cork defence that has been, for the first time, tested in terms of a goal-scoring opportunity. Niall McCarthy. 
diagonal ball sent down towards Cody O'Sullivan as Michael mentioned substituted half time for Patrick Horgan scored uh, freely against Tipperary you will recall with 2-1 but really hasn't produced it since and here's a man who's very much in form O'Sullivan turns left turns right hits it onto his right and puts it over the bar so already the substitution has worked for Cork yeah bad mistake there by uh, Declan Pendergast to try to hand pass it back put on Murphy under pressure and for a second he might have been in on goal but lovely finish shortened up the grip of the hurl and tapped it over the bar and John Milan probably one of his easiest chances that he normally for him he'd stick that one over hit the post and uh, I think Kevin Moore maybe panicked to be coming in tried to pull on it could have controlled the ball maybe but uh, good start by Cork Waterford took eight scoring chances they took eight points out of it and not a single wide Isaki looking good six foot seven combination the twin towers and already we have a far better second half in the opening uh, two minutes or so than we had over 37 of the first but Isaki and Cusson good combination good finish yeah the big difference there Marty Carl knocked in the ball into space you know nice nice height on it not too high and uh, Saki was able to grab it and, and lay off a nice pass to Cusson over the bar simple score nipping in Richie Foley going back to try and gather it under pressure Ray Ryan Carl Nocton is outside him Ray Ryan is fouled and the fists are clenched with some of the Cork players so I'm pretty sure that Dennis Walsh said you know lads you want to kind of sort yourselves out yeah well you know we, we said it all during the first half very poor forward play particularly in the first half but much brighter start by Cork not a good ball however from John Gardner giving his uh, fellow Northsider from the Cork City no chance Davy Fitzgerald's tactics, by the way, is to crowd it out as much as possible. And the shot you just saw on your television screen is getting the forwards to come out around the midfield area and crowd it. And as you said to me at halftime, Michael, it's all about making space. Yeah, no, everyone's in a heap. No, again, no left half hour position, you know. But it's, if it works, it's great. And uh, they don't care if it's low scoring if to win the game. But I don't, you know, I prefer to see more traditional than that's been their position. Malumphy to Walsh. Kind of rushed that particular shot. Donalow Cusick decided not to let it go out over the end line. And away comes Donalow. Goals for distance. Fraggy Murphy about to gather. Didn't fall his way. Gathered instead by Brick Walsh. A free indicates it is a free for Waterford. I think Brick has complained there that maybe Ben O'Connor, you know, you see the foul there clearly, that he came back with the back with the, the boot on him, onto him. Would have been accidental, I would imagine. Well, it's not like Ben O'Connor, you know, not so I have to give him the benefit of the doubt. Long ball, dropping right in. Don't low Cusick. Despite the fact that there's 22,763, you can hear him say, my ball up here. And what is now a historic evening in Central Stadium, Thurles. First Munster final, under lights. Yeah, Don Logue made that look very very easy, but you know, on a wet, damp evening like this, uh, difficult ball to take and uh, right under his own crossbar. Central Stadium certainly looks a little bit different when you switch on the lights. Sideline ball, well hit, up goes John Gardner. Loose ball picked up by Brian Murphy, or at least attempted, read it well. Looking around now, McCarthy calls for it this side. Good play by Murphy. Let's see what McCarthy does. He's dropping it in towards Isaki. Paddy O'Sullivan is around there as well. Isaki gathers. Liam Lawler stands his ground courageously. Still Isaki tries the second time to break down the Waterford wall. Back out to Paddy O'Sullivan. The umpires have a brief with a glance at each other and that's Paddy O'Sullivan's second point yeah much more decisive play by the Cork forwards Niall McCarthy is drifting way out the field here picking up the ball you see Tony Brown trying to get the half hour to come back and help but Tony is trying to stay in position Niall McCarthy has picked up a couple of great balls and a great diagonal ball again into space there and Asaki picked it up and laid it off nicely to Paddy O'Sullivan that's his second point since coming on so the substitute has scored twice from play where others had failed to register a single score in that opening half Here's Noel Connors, tenacious defending by the left corner back. 
nice little flick onto Malofi, and then he hits the stone wall by the name of Ronan Curran. And Malumphy is down like a bag of spuds. And uh, certainly Brian Gavin is not taking any uh, dissent whatsoever. Ronan Curran immediately disagreed with the official's decision. And I think by his actions there, he certainly showed that uh, he was the boss. Yeah, I'll just see. Yeah, see, it's into the. We, we've chest. talked about this over the last few weeks and, and you know okay while he was crouched down a bit he got it in the head but like that's that's the way it is the rule is now anything in that area it's going to be a free yellow card usually as well so i don't think ronan current can have any complaint there he caught him in the chest the word from david fitzgerald is seamus prendergast and it yeah. should be also noted that steve malumphy doesn't get involved in theatrics no he's tough um, but just I mentioned, I mentioned Niall McCarthy again on the last ball he won it again way out the field and I think that's what Davy is saying to whoever's on that wing Kevin Moore and Chandler Chandler, you have to come back and cover that space Owen Kelly with the free and the point six points for Owen Kelly into the middle Loose ball. Picked up here by Ray Rye. Referee blows the whistle. Going to be a free and coming across is Ben O'Connor. He's a man who knows what it takes. Davy Fitz has won two All-Irelands himself, three Munster Championships, three All-Stars. Now manager, of course, for Waterford with just over two years and a month. As Gerald McMahon was mentioning in half time with Michael like he's settled into the role and he's, his fingerprints are now on this Waterford team as Ben O'Connor takes the free and registers his third point of the game and Cork now just one point to drift yeah that's a super point uh, great leadership I think shown by Ben O'Connor there normally John Gardner takes those long range frees but you know Ben just took on the mantle there from over the halfway line straight over the bar Long took out again, Clinton Hennessy, Ray Ryan, Niall McCarthy steps inside the challenge, lays it off, first Cahal knocked it, Michael Cusson has gone left, Fraggy has gone right, it's aimed for Cusson, stepping inside, loses out between Brick Walsh and Tony Brown, back to the Brick, steps by the challenge and continues to do this little nice soft pass with the hurling, one-handed, Richie Foley launches a high dropping ball, but I'm afraid it's heading towards Tremor. He ain't going toward the bar, that's for sure. Yeah, you know, we saw Cork at that in the first half. We didn't see Waterford doing it. And that, Michael, is Waterford's first wide of the game. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not surprised that they've had so little ball. You know, really, Cork have had an awful lot of possession and, you know, coming back into the game now. But uh, a bad ball in there, you know, it should have went in. Uh, Steve Malumpha should have delivered earlier to John Milan. Ben O'Connor, under a little bit of pressure. Declan Prendergast did well combination of himself and Tony Brown deprived the Newtown Shangram Shangram and possession on Murphy good pressure by Frankie Murphy here's Niall McCarthy the umpire signals wide scored five points against Limerick in the Munster semi-final scored a point last Sunday still a tremendous worker he is marty like that i was just going to say he's not scoring it you can carry one or two forwards like that that are working so hard he's delivering some great ball in a great game last week and he's playing very very well again tonight john milan sideline ball goes to cork you can see a lot more urgency in the cork players now in the second half you know they're urging each other on driving each other on and you know they know if they can up the tempo that the game is there to be won John Gardner going to take this. Good ball as well, up towards Cusson. Took the hit from Michael Brick Walsh. Referee blows his whistle immediately. Former Waterford captain is asking for what? Let's see here. Was that a foul, Michael? Yeah, he just mistimed it and caught him in the back. Uh, Michael Cusson, much more influential now since half time, had a quiet first half. Brick Walsh dominated, but he scored a point and fouled for that free and is much more involved in the game. If Ben O'Connor puts this over, it'll be the first time 
The counties are level. This replay drives it in low, and it's gone all the way into the back of the net. A rasper that fooled everybody, but more importantly, fooled the water for keeper Clinton Hennessy. It looked like a simple tap over, but he drove it right into the corner, almost off the post, into the back of the net. Waterford are rocked. Cork are inspired by Ben O'Connor. Even if it takes just a little fraction of luck. Seamus Prendergast dropping it in. It's a waste of possession. Donald O'Cusick floats it very high. Dropping out of the night sky at this stage. Brick Walsh over towards Tony Brown. Isaki O'Halpin coming into challenge. Perhaps now we do away with game plans and defensive strategies and just deal with the heart and soul of hurling. Let it fly. Free out for Cork. And you can just watch the body language of the Cork lads. I didn't see it in the first half, but in the second half, they're clapping each other on the back, they're showing each other clenched fists, and they shouldn't be getting involved in any sort, any sort of verbal exchanges. But they are playing with greater Yeah, you can see it, Martin, since halftime, they came out in the second half, much more life in them. Just go back to that free from Ben O'Connor. You know, most people, I think, will think he mishit it or whatever, but I have a, I have a feeling that he might have went for that, just the way they, he, he put a bit of topspin on it. And Waterford under pressure again. Owen Murphy. Cusson comes in. Kicks it over. Tony O'Sullivan was coming through. Good defending by Liam Lawler. Little chink to the right, then to the left. Puts it down the middle towards Kevin Moore. Good work by Shane Murphy. Flicking it forward for his call. Knocked it. Good vision. Good pass. Over this side is Niall McCarthy. Didn't spot him. Goes down the middle channel. Claudio Selvan, Fraggy is there, so too is Cusson. Ben O'Connor comes into challenge, manages to get it. Far as the captain, Stephen Malumphy, with John Milan being held. Was Brian Murphy fouling? Waterford players protesting. Milan was doing it as well. He's looking over at Dickie Murphy, the linesman, to say, where are the officials here? There's certainly holding going on there. I you know, it's hard for the ref to see everything, but uh, Dickie Murphy was looking right in front of there. There's a change in the Waterford attack, and it's Brian O'Holloran that's coming on, and Seamus Prendergast is the player that's making way. And O'Holloran, a Waterford minor last year, and in case you've just joined us, he's just done his leaving cert. He's a player of huge potential. Cahal Nocton, Isaki, three Waterford players, one Corkman with the help of Body O'Sullivan. He's bursting forward, he's inside the large rectangle. He goes down, but the referee says he took too many steps. Cahal Nocton is furious with the official, by the way, and actually approached the man in yellow and black. There's an extra 13 metres for descent by Cahal Nocton, and there's a free for Waterford. Yes, it was Cahal Nocton first, of all, then Body O'Sullivan. And there's a yellow card for Paddy O'Sullivan. But I think it was the fact that Isaki made it inside the large rectangle and then he went down. Then he went down. He, he, uh, he looked, it looked like a dive to me. Yeah, it looked like it was a bit of a plan on behalf of Isaki. Here's Waterford now. Chance sent over the crossbar. Good play by the substitute, Brian O'Halloran. Yeah, that'll give him great confidence just on the field. Uh, nice simple chance, don't get any easier than that. Well well done by Brian O'Halloran. It's like a mirror image of last Sunday. Poor first half, much better second half. But do you think Ben O'Connor went for that? I think he might have, yeah. Just looking at the way, if we see it again maybe later, the way he, if you watch his hurl, he didn't look like he was following through to puck it over the bar. He kind of stopped his strike and with a bit of topspin looked like to me he went for the top corner. We'll have a look at it when we get a chance because the game is being played at such a fast pace. It's fairly hectic. Tony Brown, that's a beautiful cut. Up towards Shane Walsh, knocked away. Roland Curran is there. Dominic comes back for his Brian Murphy. Cadigan is there as well. And it's Quark that looked to have a little bit more confidence at the moment. Carl Nocton, tussling with Shane Walsh, has to go left. Gets a little bit of distance. Shane O'Sullivan, bravely. Puts up the left hand. Tom Kenny comes into challenge. Crossfield ball. Aimed it over towards John Milan. Comes down towards Malumpe. Here's Milan. 
This time, this time he gets a free. And Milan, not quite lighting the challenge, but to his credit, he's trying to inspire his colleagues here. There wasn't a whole lot in that. I'd say he got that from the. I'd say he got. We've just watched Ben O'Connor here. I just have a feeling that he, he might have if you just watch it, he didn't really didn't really follow through, he just kind of placed it. Maybe not, maybe he maybe he mishit it a bit too. It'd be some if he did go for it, it was, it was some to see him off his line, yeah. But then he'll surely tell us anyway the truth when we <laughs> catch up with him. He'll say he meant it, he'll say he meant it yeah. <laughs> Another point for Owen Kelly. Seven points for him. And they're level for the first time after 51 minutes of play. Just a factor to notice as well that Ben O'Connor was facing into the breeze when taking that free. Not too sure it had a factor in it. It could have been yeah, well the fact just that it's raining here now and Pearl is misty. It doesn't really matter really matter or not. It's up on the scoreboard now and you know, hopefully we'll have a great last 20 minutes. You know, much better start to the second half and, uh, you know, really set up now for nail bite and finish. 20 minutes to go. Ronan Curran is fouled. Needs a little bit of attention as well as a result of this particular sequence of action between Brick Walsh and Shane Walsh. The two Walshes between them. Yeah, Results an injury for the same Finbars man. And Cork don't want to lose another defender. You know, already lost uh, Shane O'Neill and Sean O'Neill didn't start. But even I have to say the lads come in have done very well. Uh, Raymond Ryan playing very well. They come on there. Shane Murphy came in from the start having a very solid game. Ronan is fine. It'll take a little bit more than that to uh, knock the bars man out of. Yeah, he's having a great playing. Having a great year, you know. Half. Brick is having a great year for Waterford at centre back, but Corn maybe just even shading it. His form has been outstanding this year. Three times in All Ireland medalists, five Munster Championships. Ben O'Connor. This time he sent it wide. Sides remain level. 53 minutes played. He scored a much more difficult one from out here in front of us a few minutes ago, and that was a bad way from straight in front of the goals. Knocked down by Tom Kenny. Ray Ryan coming in. Shane O'Sullivan is there for Waterford. Managed to get it up. Tom Kenny. Now Shane has it eventually. Tries to give it back. It's a terrible ball, but that's a well won by John Milan. Chasing after him. Owen Cadigan. Milan from the sideline. Under pressure. Incredible point. It's his third of the Munster final replay, and Waterford fans rejoice, and rightly so. This took a bit of bravery, a bit of judgment, and what about this for a wallop of skill? Unbelievable score. Niall McCarthy. Picked up by Richie Foley, dropping it in. Who has the ball? Shane Walsh. Fabulous catch. Turns onto the left and puts it over the bar. That's another fantastic score, Marty. Shane Walsh is not that big, but he went to the clouds for that one. Look at that, a brilliant, brilliant catch in behind Brian Murphy. Got up very, very quickly off the ground. You know, it's a simple finish at the end, but a brilliant catch. And, and uh, you know, just when it looked like maybe Cork getting here you see him eyes in the ball all the way, just floated in behind Brian Murphy. Great catch. Didn't score in the drawn game, but that's a crucial point. And it's a response by Waterford in terms of their character, like they did last Sunday. After Ben O'Connor's goal, they responded with two really magnificent points by Milan and Shane Walsh. Is it enough to turn the tide? Brick Walsh stopped this time. Puss it. Ball falls for Fraggy. Court captain is pulled to the ground. Free for the loose siders. Yeah, I mean arm in again around the around the neck uh, great block there by Michael Cousin again on Brick really Brick should have had it cleared you see John Milano going into the normal right corner where he plays Shane Walsh in at full forward right. I think he'll be much happier he just has that sort of movement of a full forward and uh, Milano will have a little bit m more room maybe in the corner Ben O'Connor going to take this 
has already scored a goal and three points in this match. That's the angle. This time he gives it plenty of elevation. Another crucial score. It's caught just one point adrift. Looks like last Sunday we're going to have an exciting last 15 minutes. Flipped away brilliantly. Comes down towards now McCarthy. Tony Brown with him. McCarthy operating as always out at left half forward. There's a tussle, there's a struggle between Brian Murphy and Tom Milan. Still Milan. Battling this time with Roland Curran. Milan takes a dive. Brian Murphy to own Caddy. Good play by the court defence. Drives it long up towards Spraggy Murphy. Scoops it up, gathers despite the attention of three Waterford defenders. Goes all the way back. Fires Ray Ryan. Quickly dispatches it far as John Gardner. He's going for the score. At least he's going for a sacking. The call comes from Clinton Hennessy. Declan Prendergast tells him to keep going. He's going straight down the middle. Touched just a little bit by Kevin Moore. Gone back there is Shane Murphy. Under pressure from Brian O'Halloran. The attempted pass doesn't work out, but Murphy has it again. Tenacious play by the wing back from cornerback. Tries to flick it away. Not. Indeed, by Tom Kenny. Overfires the midfielder, Carl Nocton. Dropping it in. It's a sack it is chasing after it. Clinton Hennessy can only wave at it. Great score. 110 to 13 points. Level for the second time. This monster final replay. And like last Sunday, Carl Nocton has scored two points. Yeah, great point. Uh, lovely little assist there again by uh, Michael Cousin. And Kieran Murphy is coming out around half hour and winning plenty of ball out there as well. Great catch there by Kevin Moore. It's Moore. De La Salle lays it off for his own Kelly. And the umpire this time is going to wave wide. Disappointment for Owen Kelly on this particular occasion. Yeah, and you know he's a key man for Waterford now in the last 15 minutes. He has all the ability in the world. Having a quite enough game, though, he still scored two points from play and scoring all his frees. Which you'd, you know, you'd love to see him a bit more involved in the overall game. Kevin Moran and Roland Curran continue to get to know each other, and uh, Brian Gavin is telling the two lads to hop onto themselves. Long ball by Donald O'Cusick. Up goes Tony Brown. Gives it down for his own Kelly. Pumps it in towards the corner. Own Caddick, just a nice little touch on Shane Walsh in the pursuit of the slither. Enough to put Walsh off, enough to gain possession and ultimately win the free. He's impressive, Own Cadigan. Probably a little bit more so than last Sunday. Yeah, he is indeed, yeah. He's commanding down there. See him driving out with the ball. I always feel sorry for forwards in this position you know, when the tackle. <laughs> Anytime the tackle it tends to be free against him, but uh, you know, he was definitely holding him up there. Just by our calculations up here in the commentary box, scoring chances for Cork are 11 out of 22, Waterford 13 out of 18. I'll just give you the way the game is going at the moment. Liam Lawler shows why he was on the Waterford senior football team last year. Free for the foul on Owen Kelly. No doubt I think about the foul here. Here's the kick. Here's the push by John Gard. Yeah, poor free to give away really there. You know, the ball had run past him then. That looks like Morris Shanahan that's going to be introduced. Younger brother of Dan the Man from Lismore. Under-21 player from last year that lost the Munster Under-21 final and a lovely evening in Dungarvan to Clare. Good forward. We'll see more of him. But first, it's a free for Owen Kelly. Just inside his own half of the field. It's a great puck of a ball into the left hand of Tony Locusic. Back out to Declan Prendergast. Sideline ball. Now the substitution is going to take place. And Morris Shanahan is coming on for Shane Walsh. Change in the water for the attack. Shane Walsh would possibly be disappointed. Yeah, I thought he did. Well, you know, I suppose they're trying to change things and they're playing off his squad. You know, that's the way they operate. But uh, you know, he had a couple of assists, scored a great point there a couple of minutes ago, and uh, you know, he did it. He, he did his piece for certainly for Waterford this evening. Very 
referee indicates it's a Waterford ball. As you can see, down at the other end, Liam Lawler is having difficulty. Had to come off the last day with knee problems, and it looks like it's the same old dilemma. Well, we've ten minutes left in the Munster final replay. What are the bets on extra time? Owen Kelly standing over this. Well within his range. Difficult angle. He runs away in that traditional style that suggests that that was a successful attempt. Eight points for Owen Kelly this evening. Yeah, Marty, again, I, I mentioned all along, maybe a couple of catches making it look easy, and he made that look so easy. That's a very, very difficult free. Bad evening, uh, raining out there, and uh, from a di very difficult angle, straight over the bar. Yeah, you know, I often hear that saying, you know, he just scores some frees, any of these lads, whether it be Owen Kelly, Henry Shefflin, Owen Kelly from Taper, or, or Joe Canning, but they have to be scored, you know, like the pressure on there, on every time you stand over the ball, and none of them scores are easy, they have to be put over the bar. You know, the Ben O'Connor goal, Michael, uh, if I recall, Paul Flynn did something similar a couple of years ago as well for Waterford. He definitely meant it. <laughs> he, he'd, he'd be really grateful for that comment, Michael. Anyway, back to this particular Munster final replay, Tom Kenny. Shane O'Sullivan is back there helping on his defence. Flicks it out first, Niall McCarthy. Continues to do Trojan work out in the wing. Ball into the middle. Puss it to Fraggy, to Cusson. Trouble here for Waterford, he's inside this time, and the referee indicates it's a penalty. Great combination play between the Sarsfields double act. Cusson, yeah. six foot seven, Sar uh, Kieran Murphy might only be five foot eight, but yeah, they but do work well. He's a very, very clever hurler, though. You know, we, we're always saying that uh, Michael Cusson was waiting. You know, really, there was no need to tackle him. There was plenty of cover there. Actually, Liam Lawler was coming over into the picture, but. He, Liam Lawler had the, had the route to goal blocked maybe, but um, he was definitely pulled down. Yellow card, by the way, for Richie Foley. And he's on the line, along with his goalkeeper, Clinton Hennessy, and Shane O'Sullivan. And John Gardner up to take it from wing back. A crucial moment with seven minutes left in the Munster final replay. Could well give Cork their 52nd Munster title. Clinton Hennessy fully focused on the goal line. Here it comes. Brilliantly saved. And Hennessy and O'Sullivan between them deflected it over the crossbar. John Gardner has to be satisfied with his second point. Let's see who got the vital touch. He drove it straight at uh, Clinton Hennessy and O'Sullivan. I think we'll give it the credit. This angle will definitely tell us. Yeah. Both of them, really. Probably <laughs> O'Sullivan, I'd say, got the, maybe the stronger touch on it. Uh, and, uh, you know, crucial, as you said, it, uh, all square now, seven or eight minutes to go. Dolo Cusick, fine goalkeeper, good hands on a wet, visible evening now here in Simple Stadium. You wouldn't think by your pictures, but there is a mist around uh, the Premier County on this particular Saturday evening. Paddy O'Sullivan in towards Isaki Ohalpi. Flicks it and tries to flick it in towards the path of Niall McCarthy. Well picked up by Tony Brown. Not good for a 37-year-old, but you know what? He won't mind if he gets a Munster Championship medal. No, he did very well. He drove out the ball there and caught by Paddy O'Sullivan. Between Esaki and Paddy O'Sullivan, Tony Brown was definitely fouled. Yeah, well, it's a bad evening out there, but the tackling has been very, very you know, tenacious on both sides um, since the start of the game. Both forward lanes in particular working very, very hard when they don't have the ball. Been levelled three times in this Monster final replay. As Cork make another change, Luke O'Farrell from Middleton is going to come on. Saw him play against uh, Limerick in the Monster Championship and uh, he looked the part, or I should say, in the league and uh, certainly played well. And as uh, Isaki is the one that's going to make way. No, he's not. It's no, he's not. It's Kieran Murphy has got Kieran Murphy that's got. Isaki looked like he was coming over to the sideline, and in fact, Isaki is coming out towards the corner. 
rather than the second. Yeah, C- Kieran Murphy again. Maybe we said it about uh, Shane Walsh earlier, but I thought Kieran Murphy very, very good game. Stephen, when he was on the ball, and I'm surprised he's taken off a clever player like that. You know, in a few minutes to go, he could create a score. Well, and Car had to let the ball go. A little bit of pressure here. Good stick work by Brian O'Halloran. Half blocked by Tom Kenny. Comes down towards Brian Murphy. John Milan. Here's Gardner. Tries to get by the initial challenge provided by the former Waterford Miner. Down towards Cody O'Sullivan and uh, Luke O'Farrell. Second friend of gas can only guide it over the sideline. Sideline ball for Cork. Four minutes left in this monster final replay. Four minutes to go. What do you think? Call it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Marty. You know, it can go either way at this stage. Uh, Brian O'Halloran there, you know, got a good time since he came on. Showed his inexperience a little bit there. A loose man outside him. A simple hand pass was all that was needed. Um, out of John Milan was outside him. He should have flicked it out to him. Poor ball from Ben O'Connor. Owen Kelly sends it into the middle towards Richie Foley. Down the wing. Coming across John Milan. Owen Cadigan would claim that that was a shoulder. The referee disagrees and he's given a free to Waterford. Yeah, and in front of John Milan, he doesn't go down easily, he takes a lot of belts. Yeah, into the back of the shoulder, definitely. Again, nothing too malicious, but uh, John, he went down fairly heavy and it's, as I say, he takes a lot of belts and not want to complain in fairness to him. Another change along the sideline, by the way. As Waterford introduced Jamie Nagel. And it's Liam Lawler that's uh, gone off. So Jamie Nagel, who played wing back last Sunday. He did, he played well when he went down, and Declan Pendergast uh, gone back. He didn't look overly <laughs> enthused by the moves there, looking at his body language, but he's gone back in there now. This is a huge, huge free now with a couple of minutes to go. Owen Kelly, you can see he's literally centimetres in from the sideline. John Milan scored a magnificent point earlier from along that particular side of the field. This is looking wide. 68 minutes played, sides level. Now, will you ask me, will Marty? I predict that if there's another score, I'd say that'll be it. You know, it's, it's been a very, very low scoring game, and uh, next, the next score is going to be crucial. Far better second half, though, Michael, thankfully. Much better second half, even though it's low scoring. Yeah. Great intensity out there on both sides. Owen Kelly. Can he produce a moment of magic? John Gardner goes in pursuit. Owen Kelly is going the scenic route all along, leaving Gardner on his trail. Here comes the cross. Or is it more than that? It's another wide off the stick of Owen Kelly. Referee Brian Gavin has blown his whistle again. And again, he's not allowing the quick puck out. The players have to be outside the 21, Marty, that's the rule, um, and he's adhering to that. Two additional minutes to be played here. It's quite tense around Simple Stadium. Two minutes of additional time. We're into the last minute. Brilliantly caught in the air by a oh, lovely scale by Michael Brickwatch to his captain, Stephen Malumphy. Brought down on the 65 metre line. Again, I see players arguing, but I don't understand it. That's a blatant free, straight in front of the referee, and Mike Custon up arguing with him. And I see Ronan Curran coming out now as well. Crazy stuff. Yellow card for Ray Ryan. But Marty, before that, one of the best pieces of skill of the game, Michael Walsh, brilliant catch uh, over Michael Custon's head, and then a lovely flick over, over the head to come out and a uh, good pass to Stephen Malumphy. You see the catch here now, and drives out it in. Yeah, no, did he throw it up? He might have fouled it. It was not great. It was a brilliant piece of You've just changed it. your mind. Well, it was still a great piece of skill, but he got away with it. But it looked really good. I, I'd agree with you, Mike. I thought it was wonderful initially, at least. Now, Owen Kelly going for the winner, perhaps, here, and going for Waterford's ninth championship title in the province of Munster. Kelly hits it. Kelly looks. 
ball is wide. Yeah, that's a bad miss, Marty. Could be a monster title gone down the drain just there. We're into injury time. A minute and a half left in Thurlis. Who can produce the magic? Here's a man who can do it, but he's way out around midfield. John Milan, over to the far side. Shane Murphy. Good play by Waterford, it must be said. By Brian O'Halloran, and that's going to be a free for Quark. The first minute of additional time is almost completed. Is this trophy going to Cork or going to Waterford? The president checks his watch. Time almost up for the Leesiders and the Deshies. Are we about to have extra time? Up goes big Michael Cusser. He's looking to go for it. He's dropping it in. Clinton Hennessy has to get a touch here. Good hands by the Waterford keeper. More than making up for perhaps the Ben O'Connor shot that beat him earlier in the second half. 30 seconds left. Out for Ben O'Connor. Hits it low down towards Cusson. O'Connor gone for the return pass. Thou shalt not foul. The 11 commandment must be the rule now for both Cork and Waterford. It's a scramble. Referees still there watching. Line ball going to Waterford. Five seconds left. Can I say now, Michael, I fancy extra time. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it now. 72 minutes. The clock has ticked away. And it looks like under lights on a historic night for the Munster province, indeed, that Dennis Walsh and Davy Fitzgerald will have to gather their players again and face another 20 minutes of championship hurling to decide who wins this monster title. Referee blows the full-time whistle, and it is indeed a draw yet again. It's been a most interesting second, a far better second half, highlighted, of course, by Ben O'Connor's goal after 45 minutes for a free. David Fitzgerald will want his players probably in the dressing room. At half time, it was Waterford eight points, Cork four points. But at the end of 72 minutes, the Munster final replay, it's Cork 111, Waterford 14 points. Thank you very much, Michael. Yes, uh, Dan, the man is on for John Milan and a big loss, of course, uh, to the Daishis. Equally a big loss is Ronan Curran. And as you mentioned with the lads there, Cyril and Tomas and uh, Chair, uh, Shane O'Neill, uh, is gone, Ronan Curran is now gone, and Sean O'Go Halpine. And uh, Dan the Man is going in towards uh, corner forward, from what I can gather, from our perspective up here. Yeah, Milan's a huge loss here. You know, but the game really opened up now in extra time, uh, hopefully, and uh, he took a heavy knock over on the sideline just before the end of the game, and he's, he's gone. 1987 was the last time the Munster final went to uh, a replay, well, not to a replay, but to extra time in the replay. It was the day when Richard Stakelham said the famine was over for Tipperary against Cork, and there's the opening score for Waterford by Kevin Moore in this 20-minute period, 10 minutes each way. Here's Moore, opening score of extra time. Yeah, very good score. Dan laid it off there, and Brick Walsh again driving forward with it. Well, as Cyril mentioned at the break, there very important the opening uh, score. Indeed, even the opening wide, it was a lovely little flick on by Paddy O'Sullivan. It turned out to be a score for Kevin Moore. Nice stick work by Stephen Malumphy. Comes out first, Paddy O'Sullivan. Thought about dropping it in. Out first, Niall McCarthy being pushed away, more and more away from the goalposts. He drives this in. Clinton Hennessy is underneath it all the way. Good uh, hands by the keeper. Out first, Richie Foley. Missed rain falling here making it very difficult for the hurlers in this very first Munster final under floodlights. It is, Marty, and, you know, to Gerard Lucknam was just making a point there that I was saying to you here, um, whoever loses this game uh, is going to have an all Ireland quarter final next Sunday. It'll be two tough matches, extra time, and it's going to be a big ask for them, you know, whereas whoever wins it goes into an Ireland semi-final, so there's a huge incentive there, and also a vital Kenny in that semi-final, so you know, much more than just a Munster title at, at stake out here. Absolutely. John Gardner trying to go down that right wing. Linesman indicates that it is a cork ball. Well, there might have been 35,375 here last Sunday, 22,763 this evening. Certainly the crowd are enjoying it, particularly the second half. 
This ball dropped in to Waterford. The players go up for it. Comes down, however, to Paddy O'Sullivan. Tries to make an angle. Still not uh, gaining any ground. Comes back out to William Egan. Hits it with great conviction. And there's a point for a young man that's going to have, I'm sure, quite a good career in the red and white jersey of Cork. Cork under 21 star from Kilbrin. William Egan. Yeah, great score, first touch for him in a Munster final and score a point. Fantastic start. Level for the fourth time. And in case you've joined us here on the Saturday game live, we're into extra time in the Munster final replay. That ball is wide off the stick of Cahill Nocht. Yeah, again, he's the type of player, you know, with his pace and fitness in, in extra time. It is when lads start to tire, you'd expect him to come into the game big time. Great puck out by Clinton Hennessy. I know hollering, chasing after it. Another one of these up and coming players. This is uh, John Milan that's suffering. You can see he can feel the pain. Half uh, muscle injury. Do you know something? I wouldn't be surprised if he came back in knowing Milan's heart. It's going to be taken by Ben O'Connor. Just around the middle of the field. Sideline ball at the far side. Cuts it neatly. In towards the Saki Lahadpin. Going back to gather his big watch. Brings Clinton Hennessy into the game. He goes for distance. Down towards Morris Shanahan. Runs on kindly. Towards another one of the Shanahans. Dan the man. Referee spotted the foul on Owen Cadigan by Owen Kelly. And that's going to be a free for Cork. Yeah, a good ball by Dan Shanahan in in front. And you can see Owen, Owen Cadigan out in front. As the lads are saying, he's done very, very well, um, particularly in the second half. And out in front of Owen Kelly again there. Gardner with the free. Up towards Paddy O'Sullivan. Niall McCarthy. Did well. Went down low to scoop it up. Good block down by Tony Brown. Comes to the brick. Gives it long towards Morris Shannon. Nice stick work again, keeping it in. Now, who touched that last? Referee Dickie Murphy wasn't too sure. Sideline linesman Dickie Murphy wasn't too sure. Brian Gavin felt it was a Waterford ball. I wonder. Let's just have a look at it again. Here's Morris Shannon touching it. Now, who touched it last? 50-50, yeah, 50-50. And we're not on who wants to be a millionaire, Michael. There's a fellow at home in our dressing room one time said it's 60-50. <laughs> nice cut in by Richie Foley. Kevin Moore, un unable to control it. Good work by Brian O'Halloran. Ray Ryan is pulled down by O'Halloran. That's going to be a free for Paul. No question whatsoever. Yeah, just a hand in there, just pulled him back. You know, not much in it, but it is a free. Four times these counties have been level. And it's such a wet, miserable evening now here in Tipperary that the towels have to be brought out. The wipe has to be uh, on the hurley to make sure the grip is right. And here's John Gard. Michael Cusson tries to get a touch. Stephen Malumphy is back there helping out his defence. Again, Niall McCarthy. See the way he goes down really low to try and get the ball. The Sake or Halpin. Stephen Malumphy to Cusson again. Good calling by Ray Roy. Went off a Waterford man. Happens to be Richie Foley. Sideline ball caught. Six, over six minutes gone, just four minutes to go now in the first period of extra time. Ben O'Connor could well have an idea about cutting this all the way over the bar. He's already scored a goal and four points. You can see he's pretty focused on trying to raise a white flag here. Cuts it beautifully. Dropping right in. Good defending again by the brick. Unable to keep it in play is uh, Jamie Nagel. Owen McGrath is warming up along the sideline, so he's going to be introduced. John Milan has, uh, by the way, donned the top of a tracksuit, but I wouldn't be surprised if Milan 
thought about coming back in again. I think that may well happen. Yeah, he's certainly keeping on his toes there and he's limbering up. Oh, my God, definitely ready to come in now in the next minute or two. All star twice, 0 3 and 0 8. Good cut as far as Richie Murphy. In comes Cusson. Stopped this time by Jamie Nagel. Stephen Malumphy showing a bit of leadership. Knocked away by Cusson. Ben O'Connor leaves it. As uh, Cork try and put a combination here. Kenneth Egan is showing great tenacity and determination, considering that it is his Munster Championship debut this evening. Here comes Paddy O'Sullivan. Back out for his William Egan. Ben O'Connor takes responsibility. Unmarked in the middle, Michael Cusson. Slices it off the hurl, but to be fair to Michael Cusson, it's possibly the grip because it is raining here, yeah, making it very difficult. But are very bad. This very was a chance, chance, though, Michael. Yeah, it's a very easy chance, you know. Uh, but it is very, very difficult out there now. The, uh, rain coming down much heavier, and every score now is like gold. You know, there's only been one point each in the extra time period, so you know any chance like that has to be taken. Great catch by Dan Shannon. Dan the man, hurler of the year a few seasons ago. Owen Kelly is down in a race for possession with. Owen Cadigan, still Kelly, for testing, but the referee is saying play on. Coming in is Saki O'Halpi. Typical angle, with one curl. Good effort for right of the post. And that gives Cork 12 wides in this game. And uh, interestingly, just five wides for Waterford. Down at the other end, I can reveal that Owen Kelly is fitting well. Paul Nocton gets a touch. Richie Foley leaving it for Shane O'Sullivan. There's a clear push in the back. And Shane O'Sullivan from William Egan. Free for Waterford. Yeah, there's certainly something going on between Owen Kelly and uh, Owen Cadigan down off the ball. Kelly went down the last time and then he seemed to... When he went back in, there was certainly an incident with Owen Cadigan and Don Logue was trying to get the umpire's attention. Brian Gavin is going down to have a brief meeting with his umpires. And down there... By the way, it's his own brother, David, and William Flynn from uh, for Ban. And let's see, there is consultation, but there is communication this time between the referee and the officials. And it's Owen Kelly and Owen Cadigan have been uh, battling, they're having their own battle. Now, this I'd is a deep conversation, yeah. actually, isn't it? I predict two yellow cards for the two of them. That's what normally happens in these games. But depends what they saw. I didn't see it. And Don Cusick was uh, also involved in the sense that he was protesting to the referee to come down yeah. and talk to his but umpires. There's been, there's been a lot of that. Asaki was at the last day trying to influence the ref, I thought. And, you know, lads arguing over freeze. When the freeze is given against them, arguing with the ref consistently. And Brian Gavin is having a word, and he has, in fact, isolated Owen Kelly. Pretty sure it could be a yellow card based on what... It could be more, I'd say, the way Owen yeah. Kelly's looking. Brian Gavin, one of the top referees. In fact, he refereed that All-Ireland quarter-final a few seasons ago in Croke Park. And Owen Kelly is definitely getting a lecture, and I think it's going to be a yellow card. when it's shown eventually. There it is. But good communication between the referee and his own teams. Yeah. But Has no. So... This is going to be the free in the middle of the field. Tony Brown is taking on the responsibility. Slight win to his back. More cross field than anything else. Scored a goal to force the replay. Scores a point in extra time of that replay. And Waterford sneak in front. A huge leadership again there, Martin. You know, uh, Owen Kelly had missed, uh, missed a couple of frees and, uh, just before the end of normal time, and uh, Tony Brown took on the responsibility there and stared over the bar. Well, great leadership indeed uh, being shown by Tony Brown, who took responsibility. He had no frees taken all evening here in Thurles, and just on the break of half-time, of extra time, he puts his county in front. Yeah, and I see John Milan putting his helmet back on, Martin. You were saying there from the start he might go back in. It looks like he is going to go back in. So half time, it's Waterford 16 points, Cork 1 12, one point between the teams. 
Marty, we'll give you a little break there just for a moment or two while the sides uh, switch ends for the remaining 10 minutes. It may not be the remaining 10 minutes of this monster final because we could go to another replay if they don't separate it, but it is Waterford at the advantage by a point uh, at the moment. Let's hear from the panel here, from Cyril Tomas and from Ger. Ger? Well, any, any at, at this stage, of wisdom for us? at this stage, it's like two punch fight. drunk fighters, isn't it? Just, isn't it? Yes, isn't it? Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just a case of who'll deliver the knockout blow now because they're just dead on their feet. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just pure instinct and determination that's okay. keeping them going. Yeah, because I mean, after last Sunday mm -hmm. and after that, because it, it, you know, forget about the quality. It has been real high intensity. Mm -hmm. You know, the tackling, the walk rate, the, the running off the ball has been a, of, a, of the highest degree. And so they're worn out by now. So mm -hmm. it's a simple thing now. They'll win the game. Absolutely. A slip, a yeah. slip. And it's, free, it, is it is difficult conditions out there. Very the foot now. Very it's very the ladder rain after falling as well. You know. So I mean, it is survival of the fittest at this stage. And I think one mistake or you know one bit of inspiration from somebody will win this match. I thought that Tony Brown took great leadership there. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. That was a long range free. It didn't show him off camera to go in around the full back to see what was happening in the full back and full forward. But like he pushed everyone else away. He said, I'm going to take this. So yes. Kenneth's half gone out, only missed a few. It showed like the leadership. He believed he was going to pot it. Now it's, it looks easy from here, but like he was still 65 yards out. It's straight in front, but he had to do it. So he has that quality the whole time. It's still in Waterford's hands to win this. They are at the point up. There's only 10 minutes to go. It can be anyone's game, but you'd imagine that Waterford should win it from here. Well, that's what Cyril Farrell says. Brave man. Let's see what happens. Back to Marty and Michael. Thank you very much, Michael. Just three scores in that uh, first period of extra time. Kevin Moran, Kenneth Egan and Tony Brown. And Tony Brown scoring that uh, point from a free. Well, John Milan didn't go back in, Marty. Uh, Owen McGrath has gone on there. I think young uh, Brian, Halloran is, Brian O'Halloran has gone off again. A little bit of experience perhaps now required. I thought Brian O'Halloran did quite well. But I'm sure the Waterford management feel that uh, the experience of Owen McGrath could well be a factor here. Free for Cork in the middle of the field. Going to be taken by John Gardner. Remember one of the highlights of the second half was that penalty save. Combination of Clinton Hennessy and Shane O'Sullivan. From this man, John Gardner. Difficult to control as the rain falls. Out comes Isaki O'Halpin. There too is Rick Walsh. Gets it down. Good hands by Shane O'Sullivan. Cushion just arrived a little bit late. Long ball up towards Owen McGrath. Can he make an impact now that he's introduced? Sideline ball is going to Cork. Well cut in by John Gardner. First to it is Luke O'Farrell. And that ball is what? 13 wides for Cork. To Waterford five. That's whoever who makes makes the least mistakes. You know, Marty, uh, Owen McGrath are low, you know, on the ball, hand passed out over the line. Luke O'Farrell loads of time there, came out, won a great ball ahead of Brick Walsh, but then tucks it wide. You, know, you, you just have to settle on the ball. You know, in a tight game like this, you can't be panicking. Tom Kenny knocked off his hurl. Heinzman indicates it's a court ball. Waterford going to introduce another substitute, by the way. And it looks like Ken McGrath is going to be coming on for Kevin Moran, who scored that first point in the first period of extra time. Battling hard is Jamie Nagel. So too is Richie Foley. Ben O'Connor chasing after him. Trying to scramble it for Shane O'Sullivan. Sullivan did well. Bally Gunnerman. Back to Noel Connors. Gets a good strike of the slipper. Down the middle. Up comes Gard. Pulled on first time. Combination play. It comes to Dan the man. He hits it. Oh, Donald Cruz got a touch. And the ball is in the net. They rejoice around Simple Stadium. Is that Waterford's ninth monster title? Twelve and a half minutes on McGuire. It's the old boys. The old kids on the block. And old Dolo Cusick was just centimetres away from stopping it. But the power of it was magnificent. And it is Dan the man. Yeah, Marty. I have to, you have to credit, I, I said uh, Owen McGrath made a mistake before, a lovely little flick on, and, and Murray Shannon hit the ball on the ground, I was just going to say before, a very little ground hurling in an evening like this, where the ball will fly off the greasy surface, 
Um, great little ball flick in by Owen McGrath and a great pin. Like Dan did the right thing, he hit it low. I thought he should have carried it a bit further. Uh, wasn't it? You know, it just skidded off the ground. He kept it low and into the net. And Ken McGrath brought on there as well. Now a huge lift all round to Waterford. Is Davy Fitzgerald about to guide Waterford to a monster title? Remember, as Michael was saying, the winners will be avoiding Kilkenny in an All-Ireland semi-final. The losers will have to face a qualifier next Sunday. And fatigue and tiredness are going to be a factor. Can Cork respond? Waterford now, full of confidence. Over for his own Kelly. Just outside his own half of the field. He's given it absolutely everything. And I'm afraid it's right and white. Four points between the teams. Six minutes to go. Yeah, look at this again, Brick Walsh. Like he's certainly given away three or four inches to Michael Cousin, but he's feeling him throughout the games. And brilliant. A brilliant catch there by John Gardner as well. Ball sent in fast towards the Saki. Knocked away. There's Luke O'Farrell. Trying to make an angle. Sent in across the face of the goal. Claudio Sullivan chasing after it. So too is Saki O'Hapin with Richie Foley with him, right beside him. Who touched it last? Umpire says, Esakio Halpin. And I have a feeling it's the right call. Yeah, I got it right, Jeff. Or... Yes. Yeah, just off his boat, Jeff. Yeah. But fantastic, we said it before to get maybe the Waterford bench, you know, the likes of Dan Morrison and Ken McGrath, you know, really top class players so we had to bring off the bench, and, and uh, you saw two of them combining there for the goal, and Owen McGrath, of course. It's a quarter past nine on a Saturday night. And while many people, traditionalists, might feel replays for Munster finals should only be on a Sunday, this, cer this second half is certainly an indication of perhaps maybe the future because this is looking good. A wonderful arena under floodlights, Cork and Waterford, in the second period of extra time. Carl Nocton picking up a knock. Referee has blown his whistle and he's going to show perhaps a yellow card. At least a finger wagon, there's more than that uh, on the way, I think, for Tony Brown. Yellow card for the right half back. Yeah, Marty, crucial free here again. You know, I know it's been a low scoring game, a four points is a good lead, but if he can put this over the bar, three points, you know, it's only took at the ball, and uh, you know, it's not over yet. Ben O'Connor has already scored a goal and four points in the replay. Happy to take the point here. Three points between the teams. Four minutes left. Did I say missed earlier? Correction. And it's now pouring out of the heavens. But there's nobody in the 22,000 attendants leaving Central Stadium. It might have been dull and uneventful first half. Plenty to talk about in the second. Waterford protest vehemently to the Wexford linesman and Davy Fitzgerald would be well advised to stay away from the linesman at this stage and let the game continue who got the last touch? I think it was on McGrath off his I think the linesman got it right but it, whether he's right or wrong the well, linesman, the linesman is, is right yeah, but this type of thing is, is crazy you know roaring and falling at a, at, a, at a linesman like that he's only out there doing a job it's... Well, it takes a lot of courage because he's there on his own and tempers are Passions are high. Good work by Jamie Nagel. Distance is what it's all about. Owen Cadigan never took his eye off it. Dan the man tried to scoop it up. Cadigan is there once more. Bursting forward is Tom Kenny. Runs kindly for Cahill Nocton. Cork needs to score here and they need a goal. The point is no good. Cody Sullivan. Tony Brown swings it back down into Cork territory. Up comes John Gardner. Ball falls kindly for Tom Kenny. Tries to burst past two Waterford players. One of them is own Kelly. Free to Cork. 17 and a half minutes played. Two and a half to go. John Gardner knows well that he has to drop it in. Asakio Halpin goes up for it. Backs to the wall as Waterford defend. Noel Connors tries to scoop it up. Comes back out first, Tony Brown. Flicks it down that right wing, down towards Mara Shannon. One here by Brian Murphy. Cahill Nocton says leave it. Goes around the scenic route, makes an angle. Happy perhaps to drop this one in again towards Isaki. 
Not a great ball to the left of the post. Great fielding by Tony Brown. Nowhere to go. Hand passed outside. Comes out for his Declan Prendergast and he relieves the pressure. Tom Kenny says leave it. It's Ray Ryan does. Sideline ball for Cork. Davy Fitzgerald anxious, tense along the sideline. Well won by Michael Cusson. This is a far better ball. Here comes Asaki. Needed to get it first time. Jamie Nagel, Tony Brown there. Nagel takes control. Whips it down the middle. Nobody there in a white jersey. Ray Ryan is there. Flicks it forward, Ferris Carl knocked it. Not a great ball. Has to control it, turn. Drops this in again. It's a poor quality. Should be easy for Brick Watch. Lays it out just a little bit. Out for his own Kelly. He's the left half forward and look where he is. Playing almost right corner back. Down towards Dan Shannon. Tom Kenny. Lovely control. Slipper now in hand. Hand passes it across to Brian Murphy. Lovely little dummy. Referee blows his whistle. Free to Cork. Yes. And Owen McGrath. Deeds name is going to be mentioned. Mike. Yeah, what, I just think you know Waterford obviously got very defensive. They're all behind the ball and you know they're putting themselves under fierce pressure. There's nobody left up the field to win the ball in the half forward line. And you know it's a dangerous it's a dangerous way to be playing. But this is more than likely the last chance Cork are going to have. Less than 30 seconds to go. One minute of additional time. The atmosphere around Central Stadium is as good as a Sunday afternoon. It's 9.20. Well, you have, the real, you have the real supporters here, Martin, that's why. Dropping in, it's gone again to the left. It needed to be around the goalposts. Out comes Tony Brown to control it before it goes over the end line. Quick down the field again. Down towards Dan Shannon. Out over the sideline. Sideline ball for Cork. 20 minutes have been played. We're into injury time in time the second up. period of extra time. What can Cork do? Can they produce something from this sideline? Is the Monster Championship Cup, is the Monster title going to Waterford for the ninth time? Owen McGrath is back there. Hooked this time by Michael Cusson. Can he do something? Here's Nocton. Has to be lobbed in. It's the last for round. Now in McCarthy, they're working in. Nocton with the shot. Blocked this time. And out over the sideline for another line ball for Cork. The rain is pouring down. The Waterford subs and mentors, everybody is along the sideline. They can hardly watch. The referee has blown his whistle. There's a Cork man down injured. Oh, Waterford well, man, is it? I think it could be Tony Brown, yeah. It is. Uh, he dived in there full length over Cahill and probably got hit with the ball, I'd say. Seems to have a red mark, some blood there in his uh, arm as well. Yeah, he was very brave. I, I might get a chance to look at it again here. Um, you just see the ball come into Cahill and watch, watch Tony Brown. Ball hit him straight into the face there, yeah. This is it, this is the moment, we're into injury time, we've 16, almost 20 seconds of injury time play, 40 seconds left, Ben O'Connor floats it in, who can get there, whipped away, down the field again, the referee blows the full time whistle, and Waterford are monster champions, Dan the man is the hero, he's the one that got the goal. Last Sunday was Tony Brown at 37 years of age that got the equaliser that forced the replay. It's the old kids in the block that have done it for the Dishies combined with a cocktail of young fellas managed by a man from Clare from Six Mile Bridge. Put it all together and you have Waterford's ninth monster title. What a battle. Yeah, Marty, it's a you know, fantastic, a historic win. You know, extra time under lights in Turlist, uh, the spiritual home of Hurling, I suppose, and fantastic with heart and determination, Tony Brown epitomised it there in the second half of extra time. Um, Brick Walsh, players like that, absolutely outstanding. And how ironic that Dan Shanahan, you know, the man who scored so many goals here against Cork and in Munster finals, uh, gets the winning goal. And you know, fantastic, well done to Waterford. And uh, it'll be tough for Cork next Sunday now to come back. Waterford's first title in 1938, their last in 2007. And here tonight in Semple Stadium, Perlis, on a historic night under floodlights, it's Waterford 116, Cork 113. Waterford are champions.